Now that's what I call the dirty part. And uh, if you like satisfactory cleaning, well, that's pretty much all I'm gonna be doing today. <laughs> that was my keys, by the way. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is get a bucket. So that way we can actually clean this thing and keep all our fluids contained. So what you'll see here is I got a whole bunch of different cleaning utensils. I got this little thing that I don't even know if this works, but we're gonna test it out. It's a little drill bit attachment. Got ourselves some brass wire brushes because brass is a little bit easier on the aluminum and whatnot. So we got some of those. And then we just got a whole bunch of cleaning utensils that I've used in the past. Some of these are like pipe brushes. Some of these are regular brushes. This is an actual wire brush. So if we got nuts and bolts and stuff, and then this is just a little Brillo pad ball. This thing's really nice for getting a whole bunch of stuff up. And then of course your scotch Bright pads, your safe, this is like a non-scratch one, but it doesn't really clean as well as these ones, but these will actually scuff. So gotta be careful with those, but that's okay. So now we got ourselves an empty bucket. So now what we need to do is get ourselves a dirty part. Let's do it. I guess we could start with this part since this is where the whole thing started. Even though it doesn't quite fit in there 100%, that's fine. Then you're just gonna get yourself a gallon of water and no, this is not actually alkaline, that's just tap water because that'd be really dumb if I did that. So we're just gonna take our water, pour some water in there, just kind of fill this thing up a little bit. There we go, so that's about a gallon of water right there. Okay, so I know what you're thinking. Well, why not just use something common like this, like your purple power degreaser, hardcore engine cleaner stuff. Well, if you read the fine print down here, you'll see that most of these degreasers will specify that you need to be very careful on aluminum. So why is that, you might ask? Well, simply enough, there's just a lot of harsh chemicals in here that'll just basically stain the aluminum. So like something like this, you could technically use it, but if you don't get it completely out, it could end up basically etching the aluminum, or if you leave it on there long enough, depending on how soft it is, it could eat through it. So. It really depends on the type of degreaser you're using. So this is really good for metal and hard steel and stuff like that, but not good on aluminum. So let me show you what we're gonna use instead. Yep, that's right, a toothbrush. So now you might be asking yourself, Kyle, what are you gonna use to clean these parts with? I mean, they're really filthy. And if you're gonna use just a common household cleaner, then what's good enough to actually do that? Well, it's simple, it's called Dawn. If this stuff's good enough for the ducts, it's good enough for your engine parts. So we're just gonna take our Dawn dish soap and pour that sucker in there. That yeah, should be good for now. So for the first batch of cleaning, we're just gonna use a toothbrush just to kind of rub all this stuff in. Okay, so this is obviously not the cleanest it could be, but not bad for a toothbrush and some dish soap. Now, most of this here is part of an old gasket, so we'll have to use something to get that off a little bit harsher than a toothbrush, but considering this is just a toothbrush, not bad. So you might be wondering about the whole toothbrush thing and like where that idea came from. Well, I thank the military for that one because you don't know pain until you've had to clean things with a toothbrush. Okay, it takes a very long time, but it's surprisingly effective. So, you know, if you're low on money and you're trying to save money, I'm pretty sure you probably have a toothbrush and you could get this at like the grocery store for about a dollar. But I'm gonna whip out the power tools because uh, uh, my hands get tired. I'm, I'm, I'm too old for this crap. So let's get to using some power tools and I'll show you how quickly we can buzz through this. So we got it a hell of a lot cleaner, but there's still some stubborn spots and we still need to get this old gasket material off. So I'm gonna be using this like non-scratch Scotch-Brite stuff. So we'll see if it actually works, but yeah, we're gonna just try to get rid of all that junk. So let's do it. So now what I would want to do here is wipe this all down, rinse it off with some plain water. I don't have any water on me right now, but I just want to show you just how good this is compared to what it looked like before. And all I did really was use a bunch of dish soap and a whole bunch of elbow grease. Now you might see that there may be a little bit of staining here and there, 
but some of that's just embedded into the aluminum. Like here, this is clean, but it's just there's little imperfections in the aluminum so that stuff can get in between there. And I don't want to end up sanding this down because then it could mess with how it aligns. So yeah, but I mean, I mean, look at that. I mean, you remember what this thing looked like before. This is like night and day different, and that's just a little bit of Dawn dish soap. I mean, look at that. That thing is super clean. That is very nice. But boy, let me tell you, there's a reason why you don't do this up on the wall because, uh, yeah, that's pretty bad. It's all over my wall, and this thing's seen better days. But ultimately, it's well worth it because I was able to show you guys, you know, kind of a good perspective as to how this cleaning goes. Now, the issue is I have an entire bucket full of these things. I mean, look at this bucket. This is all full of just filthy, nasty stuff. I mean, look at this oil pump, for instance. That is just... Like, wow, that is really bad. Well, I guess there's nothing better to do than actually clean it, so let's do it. Okay, so real talk real quick. This is a lot harder than it looks. These time lapses are making this look so easy, but let me tell you, it is a lot of work. My hands are starting to cramp up. My back's killing me. It is, it is something else. So don't let anyone tell you that this is like super easy and it's just gonna go fast. I'm trying to speed through this, but this is like one of those things where you just can't. You have to take your time because if you speed through it, it's not gonna turn out good. And, you know, I'd rather do it once the right way than twice or three times the wrong way. So, yeah, a little time now is going to save me time later. Just remember that next time you think about skipping corners. So I found something that's actually pretty cool. I think this may be the original starter that came with this truck back in 2001. Because it's got the GM casting numbers on the side of it. I mean, look at that. That's the actual GM stamp on there. I think this may actually be the original starter. Take a look at those teeth. They're still all in decent shape. That's crazy. So if that's actually the original starter, that's incredible. I mean, that's that's actually ridiculous. Usually starters don't last that long. Kudos to you, GM. So I'm kind of defeated right now because uh, I've been out here <laughs> grinding away trying to clean this stuff out. I mean, it is literally 1.24 in the morning and uh, I still have a lot to clean. I still gotta do the rockers, I gotta do the pistons, connecting rods, I gotta do the oil pan. <laughs> it's just taking me so long. And the thing that finally broke me tonight was the dang intake. Let me show you. So I'm sure at a distance it's probably not that bad, but if you look inside here, it might be kind of hard to see, but inside there, there is a ton of carbon buildup. And now the issue is that to get all that carbon buildup, it is tucked away deep inside these tubes. And it is just so difficult to get in there and actually scrape that stuff out. I guess I'm gonna have to go back to the drawing board and come up with a plan for this one because uh, this thing's nasty. 
So after last night's debacle, I got to thinking, and I was like, what can I use to clean inside this thing nice and deep? And well, yeah, I was thinking, you know, toilet bowl scrubber can get in there pretty deep. It's soft enough that it's not going to damage anything, and we should be able to scrub all the crap out from inside that I can't reach with my hand. So we're just going to have to test this thing out, and uh, it's brand new, so don't worry. <laughs> it's not actually from my toilet. So let's test it out and see if we can get this thing cleaned up. So the area we're working with is deep inside there. It's going to be kind of difficult to get, but hopefully we'll be able to do it. Who would have thought you could use a toilet bowl brush for cleaning car parts? It actually fits right through the intake, it seems like. Well, oh, about halfway in there. Oh, look at that. Nasty. <laughs> oh yeah, I think this is definitely going to do the trick. Look at that, it goes right in. It goes all the way to the back. And I can just twist it and keep pulling it out, and then bam, we get all that junk out. Beautiful. So this thing seems to be working pretty good, so I'm gonna speed this up real quick. Okay, so that didn't quite work. So where the toilet brush goes, it actually worked really well, but if you look back there, there's a little thing back there that prevents you from getting all the way to the back. And there's a little section up towards the top that's open that you can't get to. So I decided I'm gonna go put it in that bucket and let it soak. Okay, I refilled it, it's full now. So while that thing soaks, I'm gonna go start working on the oil pan. Oh yeah, that's gonna be a lot of fun. thought I would have got this thing this dang clean. I mean, that is, boy, that is something else. Holy crap. So now that we've got the oil pan nice and clean, I still have a few more parts that I need to clean up. And I've got the intake soaking. And I looked at it, and it's not looking too good just yet. So I think I'm going to have to let it soak overnight and just kind of hope that it's better by the morning. Because here we are again. It is, yep, about 1.30 in the morning yet again. So uh, I'm gonna let that thing soak and then I'm gonna come back to it in the morning and hopefully finish all this stuff up. <sighs> Wish me luck. So I don't know exactly how to describe what I'm looking at so I'll just show you. That is some nasty looking water. Oh my God. That is just, wow. Oh man. This is so cold, I can't even begin to describe. But man, I think that is a lot cleaner than what it looked like before. You be the judge. So I guess while that thing's drying, what we're gonna do is go work on cleaning up the camshaft, and I gotta do the push rods, I gotta do the rocker arms, and I gotta do the pistons and connecting rods. So, yeah, this is gonna be fun. Hopefully I can do it before it gets too late, because it's pretty chilly out here. So I don't think the cameras do justice to just how dirty these things are. I mean, this thing has literally got 360,000 miles on it. Check that. Do you see just how much crap is in there? This thing is filthy. I mean, it is just beyond nasty. I mean, look, there's shiny metal right there. Look at how disgusting this is. I mean, this is just, this is filthy. I mean, how this thing was running the way that it is who knows, but that's 360,000 miles worth of just pure gunk. And the fact that this stuff's getting clean with just some dish soap, it's actually kind of amazing. So Don, I don't know if you're seeing this, but if you are, just saying, good opportunity here. Kind of an untapped market. 
Okay, so I just found something crazy inside here. Now, for those of you that don't know my dad, my dad has always been a corn fanatic. The guy just loves corn, okay? You could say he's a corny guy, I know. But <laughs> I literally found a chunk of corn inside here. And no, not like the type you would eat, at least I don't think. Because this thing, so this piece of corn here is literally rock solid. I don't know if it's been lodged in here or if it got in here when we were moving stuff around or what, but look at this. That is literally a kernel of corn. Like, <laughs> what? I think he's thinking, yeah, I put that piece of corn in that part of your car. What are you gonna do about it? So that has to go down as probably one of the most bizarre things I've found inside of an engine so far. So leave it to my dad to have a kernel of corn inside of his engine. Crazy. Yep, we did it again. <laughs> Another late night in the garage cleaning car parts. I don't know how many times I can do that and try to make it exciting, but hopefully it came through on this video because boy, it took way longer than I originally planned on. But I literally cleaned almost every single part that goes inside of this engine. So it's a lot of parts. And this thing had 360,000 miles. It was the most sludge contaminated, just full of carbon. I mean, these were very, very difficult to get clean. But I was able to do it with just Dawn dish soap and water. I used a little bit of brake clean just like after everything was done to make sure that there was no soap left. But outside of that, I mean, it was primarily Dawn doing all the work. Well, and my elbow grease because <laughs> I literally rubbed a hole in my sweatshirt from all the like, you know what I'm saying? So it's been crazy. It's been a long night. I'm gonna go get some food. I hope you all have a great one. And I'll be sure to see you in the next one. Have a good day.